afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Ingram Jones and I have with me world class heavyweight BIA back in action Eddie <laughs> Chambers. Eddie, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm ready, I'm, uh, ready to rock, man. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while, yeah. finally. Big fight, so, April 30th, I believe, against Gerald Washington. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's looking like right now. So, uh, you know, a little, a little, uh, a bit excited anyway. So tell us, um, for those people who don't know about Gerald Washington, give us a little, give those people a rundown as to who Gerald Washington is. Well, he, um, he's, uh, about six foot, he's about six foot six, you know, really, really good athlete. Uh, he was a former football player from, uh, uh, in UFC, play, uh, UFC, USC, uh, which is, uh, University of Southern Cal. Uh, he played, uh, I think, uh, tight end, and, uh, and then turned DN, had a few trials with NFL teams, and, but I think he boxed a bit when he was a kid, and he said he was, uh, going back to his first love which was boxing, uh, obviously a little later, you know, after his college years. So I think he only turned pro maybe in like 2011 or 12 or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, he's been, he's been moving pretty fast and doing, doing pretty well. Uh, as far as his boxing skills, I mean, obviously he's, you know, he, he's still improving, you know what I mean? He still, you know, has, uh, things to, to learn because of, you know, when you start late, it's still, you know, there's still progress you have to make just because when you start late, it's actually harder to train you to do some of the things that as you do that, that you would learn from when you're a kid because obviously it's like learning a language. If you're learning a language at a at a young age when you're when you're still developing, your brain's still developing, it just kind of seamlessly goes together. But once you're already set in your ways, it's kind of hard to, you know, listen. I, 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 how do I explain it? Like, uh, to listen to something new or to, it's like teach an old dog new tricks type thing. You know, that, right? You know, it's that old. Moniker is so, um, but he seems to be doing pretty well. You know, he's had some uh, some fights with some named guys. He's, uh, he's he's done really well with them. I think his last fight, to be honest, uh, it was a draw. I think that was a, a a gift draw, honestly. You know, because of his popularity and where the fight was, and you know, just no, you know, boxing. Yes. Uh, uh, Amir Mansour, and uh, but I still think he done well early on. He just uh, hasn't. You know, he wasn't able to sustain it through the whole, for, throughout the whole fight. And Amir came on at the end of the fight, and I think he should have got the decision by at least by about two points. But uh, nevertheless, he got the decision. It wasn't the one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. So, you know, you can't complain but so much. But, um, you know, there's like I said, there's holes in, his, in what he does. But like I said, he's a big juggernaut type guy, big, strong, athletic guy. Uh, and I've seen some of those in the past, don't get me wrong, but this is a, this is a little bit more, is a little bit different, you know. This is uh, maybe a bit more difficult, um, you know. We'll, we'll see. What does um, I mean? What? How much has Eddie Chambers got left in the tank? You're now going up against a big, strong, young heavyweight, inexperienced, let's say. And I've heard a lot of rubbish over the internet. Oh, Eddie can't fight big guys. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of your career fight a lot of big guys, so I don't know where that's come from. Well, you know, it's, it's it's one of those things. I mean, people haven't seen me fight lately, and you know, it's there's it always going to be a lot of things come from the detractors and what people feel that you know they've seen of me. And really, honestly, recently there's not much. So oh, he's left. He's he's gone. There's nothing left in the tank. In the tank from him. And then there's you know, some people think that I'm a has been, and then there's some that think I'm pretty much never was. So you know, with that, I mean, you know, I, I embrace those things. I don't, I don't really. You know, hate the people that say that they're just they're just uh you know ill informed they just don't know you know quite what I'm capable of and that's fine and I feel like you know no matter at, at any level at any stage in my career let be it if I'm older you know if I was younger it really doesn't matter I'm always gonna have to prove myself because of my size but once people see me in the ring it generally changes their mind you know pretty quickly either that or they'll start looking at the opponent that I had and start knocking him down which has actually been you know, the case with me, most of the time when I've done well with guys and which is pretty much, you know, out of 46 fights, I've done well 42 times. So, um, you know, people will look at me and say, oh, well, you know, that guy just wasn't that good, you know, as opposed to saying, well, maybe I was just 
I'm just that good. So that's and that's okay too, you know. And I'll, I'll keep laughing all the way to you know to to the bank or you know if, if I was lucky enough to have that kind of an era, maybe the Hall of Fame, but I doubt that. So, um, but I just I just want the opportunities, you know, get get a get a shot to prove that I'm you know I'm still amongst the elite. I feel like I have a ton left in the tank. Look, you can hear me talking to you. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that my body's able, but, you know, obviously my brain is still sharp enough to, you know, give insight on things. And I'm, I still talk clearly. You know, I'm not slurring speech. Um, and I'm still moving the same as I always have. But, you know, the, I've heard the term people get old overnight. And maybe that's what's going to happen to me. Who knows? But I'm just going to say, well, give me the opportunity so that I can, I can prove to myself and also prove to the other people that I can go. And if I can't, well, hey, then uh, I'll happily walk away. Eddie, this fight, is it not pressuring you to make a statement? This is a fight that's probably going to be televised, I, I assume. Um, people are going to be watching to see what's going to go on here. Are you not going to have to make a statement and not be involved in a stinker? Well, I mean, I think so. But at the same time, it's, you know... They'll think of, they'll look at it as a stinker anyway. You know what I mean? No matter what, if they see skills, and you know, regardless of whether I'm busy or not, and I don't knock the guy out with you know big shots and things like that, but I dominate him, you know, over over the course of uh, you know a long lengthy fight, then they'll you know oh see boring, 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 and you know all skills no go. There's no fun. There's no nothing. And and that and that's generally where my career has been and what I've had to deal with. You know, I've done. When I fought Samuel Peter, beat Samuel Peter, I, you know, I heard so many negative things from that. Uh, you know, even the other guys, you know, early on when I was fighting Brock and Gwen and, and those guys, you know, there was a lot of negative talk there, too. So, you know, I mean, with me, it's like, if, you know, I do want to make a statement and uh, prove that I'm a quality fighter still and all that. But I think the, the whole excitement thing, I'm, I'm hoping that it could be an exciting fight, I think, with a guy like this. It's almost going to have to be, and it, it, I just feel like the way he fights is, uh, you know, being green, and, 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 and then there's some aggression that he has, even though he, he moves a lot. He still is aggressive at times. Pretty seems to be a big puncher. You know, I, mean, I think it has that 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 uh, exciting kind of fight feel. But, you know, uh, I, if, I, if I go in there and say I take control and start to dominate the fight and he doesn't, he's not landing big shots or he's not landing shots. You know, these people are going to start, oh, it's him again. He's he's boring. He's this, he's that. And then, you know, and, and, and there's nothing I really can do about that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to stand there just because, just for the entertainment. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm trying to entertain the best I can with the ability that I have. But I'm not going to stand there and let somebody punch me in the face just for some people to be happy that, to be quite honest, it won't give me a dollar if I'm not able to talk or, or, or able to work are able to do anything for myself in the future. So I've got to look at, you know, the future for me and my family, and I'm not going to sit there and let no 6'6", six 250-pound six, guy punch me in the face just because I think it may make some other people smile for about 30 minutes. And that's just not, that's not, my, uh, that's not my way of doing it. I, I'm smarter than that, and I feel like I'm, I'm just not going to allow that to happen, no matter what. Okay. Tell me what you have to do to beat Gerald Washington on the night, for your in, in your opinion? Well, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going to California. You know, I'm going to L.A. to fight him in, you know, what's some, you know, kind of his home, his home turf. Um, he's the the big guy. He's the name now. He's, he's 6'6". He's 250 pounds. He's athletic. He has the look. You know, he has the following. Um to, in order for me to beat him, I'm gonna have to completely dominate the fight to where it's just it looks it looks bad if they give the decision to him or um, stop him. I mean, I just feel like that's just the only way that you know it can it, it can go my way. But you know, it, I mean, there's stranger things have happened, and you know, I'm looking at Amir, and, and, and even though I felt like Amir won the fight, he got a draw. So I mean, that's not so bad. I mean, I'm just I'm just looking to get. The opportunity, this, this is, and this is an opportunity to show my class. Okay. You know, I can't, I can't be too worried about the decision. To be honest, I got to go in there and do the, you know, to give the best showing that I possibly can, and hope that 
you know, whatever happens in that ring, you know, it, it takes care of itself, you know, be it a, be it a, uh, a knockout or a decision. You know, I just got to make sure that I'm prepared for him, I'm not thinking about the judges or anyone that ringside. I got to be thinking about him. It's a tough, ta- a tough task I have at, tough, a tough task that I have at hand, and I got to make sure that uh, I'm on my P's and Q's and, 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 and completely prepared properly for, uh, for Gerald Washington, not for the judges. Okay. You've got you've had three or well, three trainers I'm not I'm aware of. You've had James Elibashir, you've had mm-hmm. um Peter Fury and the trainer you've got at the moment. Um yeah. put those three together, in two thousand and sixteen, what are we gonna see from Eddie Chambers? Man, what what, what those guys have given me is I, you know, and I mean I, I felt like I already had a great deal of boxing knowledge already. Yes. But you know, like like with 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 uh, James Ali Bashir, I mean he's you know he's one of the best uh, boxing minds in period in, in boxing at this point. Um, he's given me a, a lot a lot to think about, a lot to a lot to work on, a lot to you know I've learned a lot from him. Um, then you know you have Peter Fury, which is a, he's another scientist in the sport and one of the best game planners you know out there, and uh, he's given me another way. Of, of looking at heavyweight boxing and how to prepare and what to do and wait and, and, and even certain ways to move to put yourself in position to be able to fight big guys, to be honest. And it's given me a new lease on, uh, on uh, heavy, uh, on boxing life, just him in general for bringing me over and being able to work with the guys. And now me being a part of the Fury family, it's just been, it's been an awesome situation. And with, and with coach Ant, I mean, He's uh, a very underrated uh, boxing trainer. Nobody really knows a lot about him. You know, he's he's uh, he's like a rookie, and, and you know, it's funny because a lot of the same things were, were kind of being said about Peter about Peter before you know Tyson started to really you know get up into the big time, and everybody can see what he was able to do and what he was capable of as a trainer. You know what I mean with the things that he corrected with Tyson. Um, and I think I see that same kind of trend coming here with, with Coach Ed because a lot of people don't know him, and it's, oh, he's just there, and, you know, Chambers really don't have nothing left, and he's just giving him an opportunity to work, and, 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 and they're going to have so much, like, what does he really know? Well, you're going to get an opportunity, you know, with these next uh, this, with this next fight for one and hopefully fights following that to really see what he's capable of. I mean, he's, he's more than just a pad man. He, he's a student of the game. He's willing to learn. Uh, he's not trying to tell me what to do. Like you need to do this. He's not those, one of those kind of trainers. We work together to come up with a proper plan and 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 how to um, you know adapt to certain things that happen in the course of a fight. Because let's be honest, you know, just like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get hit. Well, what we work on specifically is adapting to what we what we run into, having a having a way to fight. And any if to for any fighter or any situation, you know, we even have sparring set up that way so that we could be pre prepared for anything that may happen during the course of a prize fight. And that I think is uh, the best way to uh, to do it. This situation, Al Heyman, has he got both a Gerald Washington and yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. So, so is this a situation that you know? You're being thrown to the wolves, or Joe Washington's being thrown to the wolves, or it's just a fight that's been made. Well, I, to be honest with you, just like you know, just like you said, you know, most people feel like, what does Eddie Chambers have left? Right. And I guess this is an opportunity to show them. But in in the reality of it, and I looked at, I I, I, I didn't know this back when I was younger, but when I was going over to fight Povetkin, it was more like a thrown to the wolves, you know, a show. Yeah, it was like it was like they're just throwing me in, and it turned, and it just so happens that. I was, you know, capable of handling that, regardless of whether I won or lost. People, well, most people understand that I was able to take, take, you know, I was able to keep, you know, like, will be able to deal with that kind of guy. And I, in fact, outclass him in a lot of ways. But, and I still lost the fight, so I can't really, you know, go too much. But anyway, okay. it was a similar situation for men. But now, you know, it's it's not so much. Oh, can he handle it? It's more. Well, is he still physically able, especially with a big guy? big athletic guy like this that he's facing, you know, and, and I don't really think the questions are so much about that, about me, they're more about him, 
Yeah, they don't care about what I do. You know, if if you know if I don't win, and you know, okay, cool, go ahead back to whatever you were doing before we saw you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or we saw well before you resurfaced. You know, go on on back and do that, so we don't have to deal with you anymore. Right now, it's all about him, and the only way that I can really make any impact at all is by obviously winning and and proving that I'm still elite or to most people, oh, he's just not, he just wasn't that good. He was a football player or whatever they would say if I beat him. Okay, fair enough. Let's just, let's, let's ask three very quick questions. Did you see, uh, uh, did you hear about Huey Fury versus uh, Dominic Gwynn? Yeah, I did. I talked to Peter actually uh, via, uh, via WhatsApp and he was telling me, you know, he pretty much done what I expected him to do. I knew Dominic uh, Gwynn is, he's a real tough guy. You know, but I just didn't think at this point in his career he was going to be able to really give uh, Huey too much work, to be honest. But um, you know, it pretty, pretty much went how I would have expected it to he go. He dominated from, every from round, I understand. He dominated every round. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, listen, believe me, there's not going to be many young – there's not there's not going to be many guys out there that can deal with that kid. Once, he's, once he really starts to – he's starting to grow into his body now. He's getting older. You know what I mean? He's getting more mature as a fighter. It's going to be like hell for most guys trying to deal with him because he, there's so many things that, that he can do. And there's so many things that they work on that is a bit unorthodox, but it's, it's quality. I'm telling you. Similar, similar, and it's funny because he's six foot six and he's doing a lot of the stuff that I can do. And, it, it, you know, maybe not as fast, but it's still effective. And he, like I said, he's, he's got, uh, you know, he's, the length. On top of that, it's just you know, there's a lot of things a kid can do, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell. Of, people, somebody's gonna have a hell of a time. Well, no, most are gonna have a hell of a time dealing with that kid in the future. So, uh, just be prepared. <laughs> Dave Allen against uh, Jason Gavin. Did you get to see that? Well, I was, I'm sorry, I was just about to get out the car on this guy. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, because this guy is just really up. Uh, I don't even want to say it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did actually get a chance to watch it. And, you know, Dave, I feel like he has so much more talent than he shows when he goes out there. You know, because I've seen him. I, I know how he works. I just his, you know, his fluidity, it's, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? That sometimes I see him, you know, selling himself short with how he fights. And, uh, you know, he can do a lot more than what he shows. I'm talking about skill, not just, you know, pounding the guy in the head. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. And finally, your prediction, uh, Charles Marty versus Anthony Joshua. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I think it's a pick em. I really think it's a pick em fight that. He's a, he's a southpaw, uh, Charles Martin is, and... He's a little bit more tricky than, you know, that people give him credit for. He's, he's, you know, he's a big guy. He's him and, him and uh, Anthony Joshua are the same size. Um, obviously, you know, we, we see Anthony Joshua him having that uh, big amateur pedigree and all that and what he's done and, and you know, the talent that he has. But um, he's really being tested. I know, you know, there are people looking at this title as an is a, is a easy title, uh, easy, you know, belt to get. But I think they're missing the, you know, I think they're missing the boat a little bit on that, and uh, you know, I think it's a pick 'em. I, I really do. I, I think when he gets in there and, and then those two go at it, you'll see what I mean. But as of right now, you know, it's only speculation. I mean, we, we really didn't see much of Charles Martin in that fight with uh, with um, Glasscough, you know, because of the injury. But you know, I, I just feel like he's a lot better than people give him credit for. I don't say a lot better, but he's definitely better than people give him credit. for. Okay. Eddie Chambers, have you got a message to your fans before you finish? Well, honestly, man, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for the ones who have been diehards and stuck with me for, you know, for a long 15, 16-year professional career, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you. And, and I think that, you know, with this opportunity, though things go so well, you know, I'm going to, you know, be, make a beeline for the big fights. And I'm going to make them proud as I possibly can before I decide to walk away. I'm not going to spend too much more time in this. And I just really have appreciated, you know, throughout a long career, you know, well, I mean, I guess it's a long career. <laughs> it's 15, 16 years is fairly long. Um, 
And I just, like I said, I just appreciate the support, the continued support. And, you know, hopefully, you know, like we can get a title at the end of this. A world title you're talking. A world title. Yeah, I mean, I've had, you know, the, the continental belts and the opportunities to get others. And I've got a shot at the world title, but it's not like, it's not like holding one, you know. That's uh, that's a big, big deal that and I really want to do that before my career is over. But if it doesn't happen, what can I do? Eddie Chambers, thank you for your honesty and thank you for talking to Bayloric TV. Oh, not a problem, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Take care, Eddie. Yes, sir.